covenant that, that God has ordained uh, for us to keep and to and to uphold. And with that, I'm gonna we're just, I'm just gonna be adding to that as God gave me uh, a word today. And we're starting out in, in Genesis, which is in the beginning, uh, where uh, the Lord began all of creation. And we're starting out in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And this is talking about the order of the family. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help me. And that was so significant because out of everything that God made and God created uh, in the beginning, everything that if you look back, he said that it was good. It was up until this juncture where God looked at Adam and man and said, you know what? It is not good that you should be alone. And that's significant because if you think about it, you hear, you know, a lot of people, well, well God is with me. And, and, and God was with Adam. We know that God was with Adam. So why would God, while he was with Adam, say that it is not good that you be alone? Even though I'm with you, you're still alone. God recognized in his infinite wisdom, and it wasn't like it caught God off guard. He had this plan from the beginning that he was going to create Eve and take Eve out of Adam to place him there with Eve because he knew that it was not good for him to be alone. And in that, we look at some of the greatest, some of the greatest torture or punishment that you can place on an individual is to put them in solitary confinement. Why? Because they're alone. You know, that's that's a form of punishment. Even, even beyond, on top of being incarcerated, they say, if you do something bad in there, we're just going to put you in solitary confinement. Why? Because it's punishment for you to be alone. Now, as we look at what God is saying here in the verse when he's talking about Adam, and he's saying it's not good for you to be alone, he says in verses 21 through 25 of that same chapter, And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept and took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, and, he shall, and she shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. We talk about help me. God says that I will make him a help me in verse 18. And the verb help basically means to aid or supply that which the individual cannot supply for himself. <clears throat> in the Greek, it means biotos which means physician. It conveys the thought of aiding someone in need such as oppressed. So when we look at that, it means, help means to aid or supply that which the individual cannot supply for himself. So, and I, and I, and I, and, and my wife shared our story the other day uh, uh, of how we met, and I look back to uh, uh, probably it was over a decade when I was praying for her, you know, and one of the things that God said to me as I was praying, he says, you know, and I hear this as clear as day, it wasn't audible, but it was in my spirit, I'll bring her to you. And so now, you know, I was, I kept, you know, is that her, is that her, is that her, is that her? I didn't know it was going to be a knowing that I knew that I knew that I knew that I knew that I knew, and I was just sharing with her the other night. She had... She said that she would go to these meetings and she would see other guys there, but she never felt led to sit by any of them or approach any of them or anything like that. It wasn't until I came into the meeting that the Holy Spirit said, sit by him. And so I looked at the tying in of the culmination of what he's saying here. He brought her unto her. So the Holy Spirit basically took her by the hand and said, sit here. And I look at that manifestation, I said, wow, that's God's prophecy. That's God's word and action of how he brought even my wife unto me. 
and he brought Adam, he brought Eve unto Adam. Meat means, because we're talking about help, meat comes from the Hebrew word meaning opposite. Literally, it is the opposite of him, meaning that she will complement and correspond to him. In the Greek, it means according to him. It also means to complement and correspond to him. It also means to harmonize. And I talked a little bit about the harmonization of a relationship and to correspond. And I thought about it, you know, all this, out of, out of all of the creation, Adam was naming all of these animals. And he was, he was calling, you know, this is bird and this is this and this is alligator and this is this. None of those things which Adam named that God had, had created and placed in the garden with him could correspond with him. He, he was alone. And even with God, you know, he could talk to God and he walked with him in the cool of the day. But God himself said, it is still not good for you to be alone. And so Eve was placed in the garden as, 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 as his help me, not only to help and aid him in supplying him with something that he couldn't supply for himself. She came out of him and she was there to aid him in things that he needed. And so to compliment and correspond, to compliment, that is so huge. You know, you, you, we've seen, you know, uh, 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 couples that they don't really compliment themselves well. They don't really correspond to each other very well. And this is a biblical aspect of what it means to correspond and to, 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 to correlate with each other. You know, God is saying, this was my design from the beginning. Compliment each other. You know, not competing. You know, there's things that she does well that I don't do well. And I know that I'm confident in that because God said that she would be able to supply something that I can't supply for myself. So why am I going to get upset because maybe she's a little bit better at balancing the book or maybe she's a little bit better at dealing with these type of people. No, that's my help. And God said, I made her that way because I knew that there were things that you couldn't do that she would need to be your help and able to be able to do that and vice versa. You know, and we're going to go to Ephesians. Well, actually, before we go to Ephesians, I'm looking at verse 24 because this is, this is something significant. Uh, Therefore, man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Leaving and cleaving. The leaving and cleaving is not necessarily just a physical, you know, uh, you know, you have people who, 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 who are in relationships who, you know, one one is spouse and the other, they're either the mom, the, the boy is the mama's boy, or the girl is the, the daddy's girl and everything. And they've left the house, but daddy's influence is still there. They left the house, but mama's influence is still in there. They truly haven't left. So they've left, but they really haven't cleaved because mom is still saying, well, y'all are going to do this, right? Or y'all are going to come over here, right? Or y'all are going to do whatever it is that we need you to do, right? And the man feel obligated because there's not been a true severance of that. That causes issues, and the enemy knows that. That's why God has given us an illustration of in a marriage what to do. You got to leave, and you got to cleave. And the illustration that I gave the other night was that it's like with an official board. With an official board and a company, those are the people that make the decisions. So the two make up the majority in the relationship as far as the decision making. Everyone else on the outside is in an advisory position. You can advise me, Mama. You can advise me, Dad. I hear you and everything like that. But me and my wife are going to come up with that decision on our own. Well, why don't y'all come over here for Thanksgiving? Well, let me get with my wife, you know, or let me get with my husband, and then we'll decide. No, 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 you ain't got what you need to decide. This is, I'm, this is me. I'm Mama. This is, no, no, okay, I understand you're Mama. I understand that you're Dad. But we're going to make this decision together because that's what God, I, I, I'm, I've left you. And now I'm cleaving to my husband. I'm cleaving to his ideas, his thoughts, his intentions, and things like that underneath prayer. In Ephesians chapter 5, starting at verse 22. Somebody want to read? Wives, submit unto your husband, to your own husband, as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject to Christ, also let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ has loved the church and gave himself for it. That 
that might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water of the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loved his wife loved himself. For no man has ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, his flesh, and his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall join, be joined unto his wife, and they shall be they sh too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Amen. I love this passage of scripture. It's, it's talking about the institution of marriage. It's talking about that covenant. It's talking about the two just coming together and truly being one. One of the first uh, verses that it's, it, 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 it starts out with is talking about the wives and submitting to the husband. And uh, uh, so often I, I've, I've seen, you know, women cringe at their work. Oh, submit. Oh, 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 oh. You know, but it's truly what it's saying here is as that man is following Christ. And so now there is not a, a, a disclaimer in that. God is saying what he's saying in there. But I want to go to quickly Luke uh, 14, 26 to explain what, what, I'm, what I'm talking about. Who comes first? And in this, Jesus was saying, if anyone, and I'm reading out of the Amplified. That's going to be the uh, King James Version. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father or mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters... Yes, even as his own life, in a sense of indifference or relative disregard for them in comparison with his attitude towards God, for God, he cannot be my disciple. That word there, he is not like, like what he's saying. He's, he's, that, that, that is translated in any one regards. So in other words, the husband is the head and the wife is to submit to him. And the husband says, well, baby, you know what I think? You need to submit to me and I want to bring three other women in the bedroom. And the wife says, no, I'm going to follow you, <laughs> but I'm not going to follow that. that that's, that's out of God's order. That's not something that is written in this word. I'll follow you as you're following Christ and as you're leading me in the ways that God would have us to go. So therein, the wife has a responsibility to God to say, you know what, some things I'm just not going to submit to because that's not what God intended for us in our household and our family. And so that's where you draw that's where you draw the line and you feel comforted in that, knowing that I'm supported by the word of God, that if I follow God first, and then you know what I'm saying, through my husband as well, submitting under him, that I'm in line with God's will. So go back to uh, Ephesians, it's talking about in verse 23. For well, the husband is the head of the wife, each that Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject to, subject to Christ, so let wives be subject to their husband in everything. And it's just giving an illustration of how we are subject to Christ. It's, 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 with me, there's always a, there's some times when uh, my wife will ask me something. And I'm not truly, you know, I, I, I'm not truly uh, uh, convicted on or, or I have a clear understanding of, of what type of answer to give her. And I'll say, this, this let me, let me, let me, let me consult. Let, let me get with God. Let me, let me not make that decision right away because I don't want to lead us or lead her in the wrong direction. And that's an ex illustration that I have someone over me, you know, and sometimes there's things that. You know, I may be, I tell her I'm processing. And before I say something, I want to make sure, you know, that I'm saying the right thing. Am I being selfish? And I analyze myself. You know, and I'm thinking about this thing this way, but I want to be correct. And in my love towards her and truly loving her as Christ loved the church, I want to make sure that whatever I'm thinking or whatever I'm processing, I come out. And sometimes I'll just step back and say, baby, give me a minute. Let me, let me think about that. 
And then I'll come back and I'll say, this is what I was feeling and this is what, but I know this is wrong because he's already checked me and this, that, and other, but this is how I was feeling, but I see the air in my way, or whatever it may be, you know, but I'm always under submission to him, uh, the Lord Jesus. Husbands, love your wives, in verse 25, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. That's just so explanatory. That's even talking about the love language, words of affirmation, the washing of the word, building her up in the Lord and encouraging her. There are things, you know, that we go through on a day-to-day -day basis that I know it's my job, my duty, and vice, and vice versa, you know, to send her uh, an encouragement through the day. Baby, God got this. The Lord is doing great things in your life. Uh, I see things man being manifested. Be encouraged and vice versa. Hey, you know what? You know, t t today was a little bit rough, but but God is working some things. God's working everything out for our good. Those are the things that in in in, in, in a relationship, in a marriage, in, in 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 being in Christ that we do for one another. And in verse, I want to highlight the verse, the, the, the word love, because when he's talking about love. There's different types of love, and in fact, one of the things uh, in the word of, in, in the word of God in the Gospels, uh, Jesus asked Peter, "Do you love me?" And if you look at the word love, it's, it's basically in the in the English, it means the same thing. You know, you think, well, why would Jesus keep asking Peter, "Does he love him?" And Peter kept saying, "Yes, Lord, you you know that I love you." And Jesus said, "No, do you love me?" Peter again says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. You know, and then Jesus asked him again the third time, Peter, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, I love you. And he says, feed my sheep. The first two times Peter answered that question, that word love meant phileo or philos in the Greek, meaning I have a brotherly love towards you. So Jesus wasn't asking him just to kind of like ask him a rhetorical question. Jesus was saying, Peter, do you agape me? And Peter was saying, no, Lord, yes, I follow you. I, I follow you. you know what I'm saying? I follow you like a fish, but <laughs> follow you. I love you with a brotherly love. And so Jesus said to Peter, do you agape me? Peter says, Lord, I, I follow you. I, I love you like a brother. No, that ain't good enough. Peter, Peter do you agape me? And then when Peter says, yes, Lord, the last time I agape you, Meaning I'm, a, I'm, I'm willing to give a self-sacrificial self love, don't want anything in return type of sacrifice love towards you. Peter said, okay, then feed my sheep. Do what I told you to do. So when the Jesus, in, 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 in the word of God, and what this is depicting here, love your wives as Christ, agape. That means I have to have a self-sacrificial love towards this woman that I don't want anything in return. I'm just doing it just because I love her. And so many times we do things, you know, and, 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 and people in society have done, we've done things in the past because we want to return. Okay, I'm going to do this if you do this, and I'm going to do this if you do this. And what this love is talking about is that's a whole other level of, of love to where, you know what? I'm going to take care of you. You're sick. I'm going to cook you. I'm going to cook you some soup. I'm going to make your, 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 your bath water. I'm going to do all of this stuff, and I ain't even worried about whether you're able to give me a return on it. That's the type of love that Jesus was talking about us having towards our spouses and, and, and towards each other. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 9, that's what I'm going to read. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, may also, may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold their chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting of hair, wearing of gold, or putting on apparel, but let it be hidden in, in the man of, oh, I'm sorry, let it hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God of great price for after this manner in the old times the holy woman also who trusted in God adorned themselves 
being in subjection to their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, <coughs> whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion for one another, love as brethren, be pitiful, but courteous, not, courteous. not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but Contrarywise, blessing, knowing that ye are un there unto call that ye shall inherit a blessing. Amen. Amen. God wants to inherit a blessing. I know I do. Amen. So, here, Peter reiterating this bond of this union uh, of, of marriage, and it says, likewise, in verse 1, be wise, be in subjection to your husband. And if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. And that's out of this, the, the winning lifestyle. There, there, there are people who, you know, got married and maybe one of them, both of them didn't know the Lord at the time. And then one gets saved. Well, what it's saying here is. And I and one of the one of the one of my favorite uh, portions of scriptures is where Paul says, "I became all things unto all men that I might by some means gain some." And what does that mean? Every time I witness to somebody, I'm not going to bring my Bible. I'm not going to even maybe even mention God. I'm just going to be their friend. I'm just going to to find out what their needs are to 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 to, to talk with them. You know, so many times, you know, and and I've been there because when I grew up, you know. Uh, uh, there were people who, you know, they would they would go out in the neighborhood and they would evangelize. They would get right with God, go to hell, and you know, and, you know. And I was like, whoa, wait a second, I don't even know you, you know. Wait, hey, oh, whoa, wait, you know. And they've already condemned me to hell. And guess what? They lost my witness because I don't want to hear that. Get out, get out of my face, you know. But then there's other people. When I was down in Ebor City, you know, hanging out, you know, as a young man, beer bottle in one hand. And, and, and practically stumbling over myself, there were men who would come up to me who just would say, hey, brother, let me let me pray with you. And it was like, you're not going to tell me I'm going to hell if I don't get from down here, this, that, and other, just pray. They were becoming all things unto all men that I might by some means gain me. And they thought, hey, is there anything that we can pray with you about? Is there any needs you have at your home? And I thought, wow, this is, this is new. This is something different. You know, and so... They kept doing that. I mean, it was like, I almost felt like they had a GPS on me because they would always find me no matter where I was. And these same guys were, oh, God, oh. And you know, I had enough conviction in me to not throw away the tracks that they would give me. They would give me these tracks and I would be out of the car littered with just, you know, Jesus say, Jesus loves, and all these other things. And then there was one night in particular where I can remember going home and I just felt, like heavy, and I just started crying, and I don't know why I'm crying. I'm like, why am I crying? I'm like, Lord, I'm just a man. I'm just bleeding. I'm just saying. It was because of their persistence, and that's what this is talking about here. This wife or the husband being persistent, not with you. You know, you need to change that. You know, no, 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 no. Just keep doing what you're doing. In the same way with 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 our with our with our uh, uh, with our children. Just staying the course, just continuing to do it, just continue to model what God has called you to model, and don't worry about the results. There's a verse in the Bible that says, I planted, I want to say this in 1 Corinthians, I planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. In other words, we're planting seeds, we're watering, but ultimately God is to give the increase. And, and with that, what it is saying is you might not see the fruits of what you're doing today, next week, next month or even next year but god says stay consistent stay consistent one of the testimonies i shared with with you all uh, uh was that of me and my me and my daughter who had a real attitude we would just sit at dinner and just make things uncomfortable our son can attest to this it'd be awkward he'd say dad it's awkward 
You know, I'm like, well, you know, son, I don't know what to do. But we kept offering them the opportunity to come out and eat with us and to sit down and to, and to fellowship even through all that awkwardness. And we always invited them to our home and they would be like, ah, oh, dad, we don't want to come. Okay, baby, uh, we got some, one Christmas we gave, we, we, we ended up giving their gifts away because they didn't want to come over on Christmas. Baby, could you come over to the house? We got gifts for you, you know, here. It's Christmas. Not any other day, Christmas. Didn't want to come over on Christmas. And to the point to where she's in tears, just baby, just go see no. Because even in, even, 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 even in this modeling before them, I knew that we had a duty and we had an obligation to continue to stay the course, continue to extend that hand of love, but not deviate from the path in which God has called. No, God has called us to model this before them. This, this union, this bond that can't be broken no matter who tries to come in between it, no matter who tries to separate, whatnot. We had this duty. And then the manifestation of what we've been planning and watering came to fruition when my, my oldest daughter says, you know what, I didn't, I didn't really like you know, she talked to my wife. I didn't really like you in the beginning. I didn't think you was a good fit for my dad. But now I see. I see why. And I really like you. And to the point now, I can't even talk to my own mom the way that I talk to you. They have that type of relationship now. But that was because of staying the course, staying in, in modeling, you know, when it wasn't easy. Because it wasn't easy. It was not easy to, you know, buy hot dogs and hamburgers and have cookouts. And everybody's at the house with them. And knowing why that 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 root of bitterness that the enemy had attempted to plant in their hearts, but we had to pray over that and and, and, and have that uprooted with the love of God. And that's my encouragement today to just stay the course, to just keep doing what you're doing. Because one thing you can't do is and, and, and that is do something that's ordained by God and then not bear a fruit of a blessing. And that's what the enemy tries to rob us with. He'll show us all these things on the outside. And he would tell it ain't working. <laughs> you see, he don't even want to come over on Christmas. Well, shit, you better go ahead and make some changes. It's not working. You see that they don't even want to come over to your house and watch a movie. It's, it's not working. But you know what? We had to fight that and continue to just, you know what? Stay the course. God's got it. He's going to turn it around. God's up to something good. God's got a blessing with my neck. He's going to turn those things around. And what he's talking about here, and when he's talking about conversation, he's talking about lifestyle. Uh, in verses 1 and 2, lifestyle. And that lifestyle is just continuing to model, continuing to model those things that uh, are good before the husband and before the wife and before the children. And it says, whose adorning, let it not be the outward adorning or the plaiting of hair and the wearing of gold or the putting on of apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart in, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, of a, of a great price. A meek and, and, and just not reveling, just not no attitude or anything like that. You know, and, and I've seen it, you know, in churches, you know, where the wife or the husband's wanting to, 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 you know, the one or the other get to see that? See what the pastor said? You need to... And it's like, no, you're going to ruin it. You're going to take away from it. Just let them receive. Just let them, let, them, let them hear what the word of the Lord has to say for them. And let God do the, the increase. We don't have to nudge anyone or poke anyone. And see, that's what, he, that's, that's what you be doing. You need to listen and all that other kind of stuff. No. That's, 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 now the person feels like, you know what? I, even if I did get something, I ain't going to share it with you because you're trying to make me feel like it's you telling me what to do. No. You know, and so it says, verses 7, it says, Husbands, dwell with your wife according to knowledge. It basically refers to being a student of her. And I tell her, I want, my, I want my doctorate, I want my master's degree, I want my continued education with her because I want to learn her to the point to where I know her. There's some things that I know and there's some other things that I'm still continuing to learn and continuing to grow and in that, you know, and that's how we husbands and even wives are to be continuing to, you know what? She don't like onions, you know, raw onions on her say, I gotta know that, you know. Hey, uh, I'm at Burger King, let me get a double whopper with cheese minus onions and this, that's something simplistic, but it's something that says, I've cared enough about you to study you to know that 
I'm not going to get you anything that's going to hurt you or harm you. I want to cater to you. I want to be that person that knows you like no one else knows you. Not rendering, in verse uh, 9 it says, not rendering evil for evil, really for really, for really but contrary wise, blessing, knowing that there, there are two, that you are there are two call, that you should inherit the blessing. In other words, I got to, if, if there's an offense, if there's something that maybe she said or maybe she did that maybe bothered me, maybe it wasn't intentional, she didn't even know. I'm not going to take that and now try to reverse it in another scenario. When well, you said such and such to me, and that's why I did such and such, and that, it's forgiveness. And I tell people, you know, God, forgiveness is not amnesia. When God says he forgives us, it's not because God is all knowing. So it's not like, okay, you did this and he forgot. It's, I want to treat you as if you haven't done anything. And that's true forgiveness. If someone, say it may be a family, a co-worker or something like that, they go off on you and then you come back the next day and you say, hey, how you doing today, man? And they're like, what's wrong with you, man? I, I cussed you out the other day. Why, why you, you got a smile on your face. What, what's up? You know, you like, you know, because we're exhibiting something that doesn't make sense to them. It's spiritual. They can't understand that principle. My blessing is going to come from me honoring God's word and loving on you versus you. You can't, you, you, I'm sowing. The Bible says, whatsoever man soweth, that shall they also reap. So even though you're sowing corruption, I'm going to sow to the spirit and I'm going to reap a blessing. You're going to reap that what you are sowing. And so in that, continuing to sow, continuing to sow, and it doesn't make sense because in the world's eyes, people think, well, you know what? Eye for an eye, two for a two, step on my shoe, step on yours, kick me in the leg, I'll kick in yours. You know, and God is like, no, don't do that, <laughs> you know? Don't, don't, don't give in. And the enemy will aid you in that. You're gonna let them talk to you like that. You're gonna let them say that to you. You go, you go, you go, you, you really? Man, you know who you used to be? You know who you man, you could have, man, listen here. And there were times when, and I and I bring this back to myself, because I always be, I'm always real and I'm always transparent. There are times when I was sitting at that table with my daughters, and I'm thinking to myself, the enemy is like, you paying for this meal? And they ain't got the audacity to show you some common courtesies, just have a conversation. I'm paying. And, the enemy, and I'm really like, and I had, you know what? I got to suppress this. I got to push this off to the side. I got to, mm, okay. I got to, I got to, Lord, you got to help me because I'm not ready to, you know. And, 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 and I had to continue to show that and continue to do that because I knew that God was going to bless my obedience. Saying, okay, you're going to be going to do what you feel like doing. You, you're going to feel better. You might feel better in the moment, but you just sold to the flesh. You just did something that, you know, you, you they did this, it was cause reaction, but because you did something in the flesh, you're going to reap that. You know, I can't plant watermelon and expect oranges or grapes to, you know, to, to, to come up, you know. And so, in Colossians, let me wrap my chest. In Colossians chapter 3. Let the, Lord, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in songs and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. As it is fit in your Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not in, with eye service as man pleasers but in the singleness of heart, fearing God. And whosoever you do, whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and unto men, not unto men, knowing that of the Lord shall ye shall receive the reward of inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Amen. Again, it's, 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 again it continues to reiterate the word of God. I'm going to just give you these scriptures so that you can go back and 
and then they marinate on them and they look at them and meditate on them. It's, you know, husbands in verse 19, to love your wives and be not bitter towards them. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Don't, 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 don't cause bitterness. Be, be, be loving. And that word bitterness means be harsh. Verse 20, one of my favorite verses. Children, obey your parents. <laughs> Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. And then there's a responsibility to us. But fathers, provoke not your children unto anger, lest they be discouraged. Children, obey your parents. And those are the things that we, 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 we continue to instill. You know, and I think that, that sometimes you, there, there's a separation even in this verse when we're talking about leaving and cleaving. Once that person is leaving and cleaving, I can no longer obey my parents. Now I have to be in communion and be in, uh, and in one accord and harmony with my wife. But, you know, it's talking about the order of the home. Children, obey your parents in all things. You know, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. And there's another verse that says that your days may be long. There's things that I, I tell all of our children, listen, you want your days to be long? Obey us. You know, and I didn't make this promise. God put up a spiritual law and said, if you don't do this, this is going to happen. And, and, and that's not necessarily a warning to just make them strike in the fear. Oh, my God, I'm going to be struck down tomorrow. I'm going to die 35 or whatever. It's just letting you know that God is very serious about the order in the home. You know, and God is very serious about, you know, being in, in, in line and in order with, with, with his principles and his teachings. And I like what verse 22 says because it ties in even with the children and the wife and the husband. It says, Servant obey, servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. Layman's turn, I got to do what's right even while she's not looking. I got to do what's right even when he's not looking. I got to make sure that I'm not doing something. And it was something that I was even speaking to, 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 to our son in the car. I said, if you want to be the type of man that's who you are in the home and outside of the home. I said, I don't want to sit up here and tell everyone else, love your wife and do this and this and that. And I'm cussing her out behind closed doors. I'm slamming doors. I'm, 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 I'm whooping up on them. You know what I'm saying? And all of those things, because now I'm doing this like this men pleaser. See, that means I'm men pleasing me and I'm doing this in front of her. Hey, dear, would you like me to roll out your chair? And da, 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 da. But as soon as we get in the car, man, get your behind over there. I don't care about you. And they're like, whoa, wait a second. What's, what's, what's going on? And God sees all of this and he's saying, you know what? You're not going to get blessed by that. Oh, you think because these people over here saw you and they seen you all doing all these things that, 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 that I'm going to somehow, I'm going to bless you what you do 365 days a year, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And so that's the mindset. And, and even with children, not doing things that are just pleasing in, our, pleasing in the parents' sights or obeying them while they're looking. Oh, there's a piece of paper on the floor. Dad, I'm going to pick this up right now. See, I'm being, you know, and then when I'm not there, well, somebody else will get it. I ain't going to. You know, that, that type of thing. God sees all of that. And he wants us to be, you know, obedient and, 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 and do it truly from our heart. And that's one of the things that is so easy, I tell her. It's so easy to be, you know, it, 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 when you love someone, it's just it's just everywhere. It's not as effortless. You're just doing it because, you know what, I love this person. I love this, you know what I'm saying? I love our, our children. So it's, it's not work, you know, for me to do these things. In, Ver in, in, in Malachi, <clears throat> chapter 4, verse 6, 